This is Paul Toomey at Presentation Tree in Seattle, Washington. As part of my iconic PowerPoint series, I'm going to talk about how to make icons. Now, I've prepared for you a three-part series, and today we're going to focus on part one, which is how to import icons that have transparent backgrounds and edit them. Now, why would you want to do an, a slide with icons? Well, here's a great example. On the left, we have a traditional bullet PowerPoint slide. And on the right, we have the exact same content. The bullets have been replaced with icons. And you can see that without a lot of extra work, it's giving the slide a lot of bang for its buck. It's becoming a lot more visual and a lot more impactful. Now, one reason this slide looks so well, though, uh, looks so good, is because the uh, icons are all visually consistent. They're all blue circles that are the same size, and they all have white art inside of them. Now when you get icons from various sources like the internet, uh, they're going to be different sizes and colors. And resizing icons is not that hard to do using the tools in PowerPoint. But the issue lies with color. For example, let's see if we can take this icon and match uh, the pink icon that's below it. So there is a color tool that we can get simply by double clicking the icon and it pulls up a ribbon and you'll see the color tool right here. If I click it, it's telling me that I can change it to any of these colors, but there is no pink uh, option in this list. Now I can tell you from more ex uh, past experience, if you pick the more variations menu, you're really going to be going down a rabbit hole. It's very tricky to make these colors match. Let's try matching the pink chart to the blue of the patient. There's no blue in this list. So you can see that uh, color matching using this tool, this rudimentary tool that's in PowerPoint, doesn't work too well. So that's why I created this technique, uh, which allows you to uh, make the icons look very, uh, very, very uniform and consistent, which is what gives the, the uh, slide and the presentation uh, the professional polish that you need. So let's talk about how to do that. So the first step would be to draw a shape. It doesn't have to be a circle. It could be, for example, this shape here, which is a um, square with rounded corners. Now notice that um, I'm kind of eyeballing to try to get all the sides exactly the same. So here's a bonus tip for you. If you hold the shift key down while you're drawing a shape, you get a perfect shape. So in this case, the sides and the corners are all the same. Now this tip works for uh, drawing circles. Notice uh, that if I don't hold the shift key down, I'm getting an oval. And in fact, this is called the oval tool. If I press the shift key down, it snaps into a circle. I'm toggling the shift key down to demonstrate. So shift equals perfection in PowerPoint. Now I'm going to color my shape and I'm going to remove the outline and I'm ready to insert some art. So where do you get icons from? Well, Google Images is a great source. Uh, the trick is to type in the word icon and then type in whatever the uh, icon you desire is and then type in PNG. PNG stands for Portable Network Graphic. That's a, a format of graphics. You may have heard of JPEGs or TIFFs. This is just another format. And for our purposes, what this means is that often, not always, but often, the graphic will have a transparent background. For example, I'll click on this first one. And whenever you see this checkerboard pattern behind the graphic, that means that it has a transparent background. This one even has a shadow that's going to uh, be shown over any any background or anything you put this on top of. So that's really neat. That's a real time saver. It's a big plus if you can find an icon shape that has a transparent background. Now, um, notice that most of the art that we see here that's offered to us is three-dimensional. Uh, and what we want is a, uh, a flat image. Uh, it can. It doesn't have to be all one color, but it needs to be flat. Um, we don't want the modeled three-dimensional images. So the first one that we have here is this one. And now I need to talk for a moment about um, the legality uh, of, of grabbing icons off Google Images. It's kind of a gray area, 
Um, what you really should do is be aware that some icons are being sold for money. Uh, they'll probably have a watermark on them. Don't use those That's unless you, you buy them, in which case you'll buy them and the watermark won't be there. Um, this one doesn't have a watermark, but I'm still going to investigate just a little bit to make sure that it's okay for me to use. And uh, yeah, look at this. Commercial usage is allowed. So I'm good to go. They're even giving me different sizes. Uh, that I could download but there's really no need to do that I'm simply going to go back to the image and right click and choose copy image and that puts it in my clipboard and now I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint slide and I'm going to paste it in again I'm right clicking and I'm choosing uh, a paste option now notice there's three paste options I'm not going to go into what they are but uh, if you pick the one that you would intuitively want to choose which is the picture you're going to get a black square and that's uh, it tends to happen when you're um, inserting PNGs into your slide but fortunately we have other options that work for us so I'm pasting the image in and I'm going to resize it so that it fits inside the icon or the shape rather and now here's another neat trick if you double click again you get the picture tools format ribbon and you can go to corrections and at the bottom of corrections you can choose picture corrections options and that brings up a window that has a great tool in it um, an, an easier way to get it in, in most versions of PowerPoint is to right click and choose format picture at the bottom again. A lot of useful tools seem to be at the bottom of the menus in PowerPoint and that pulls up the format picture palette. Now uh, the only tool that we need to work with is the brightness tool. I'm going to grab this slider and slide it to the right and watch what happens. 100% brightness turned this flat image into that, which was black into a white shape. I'll close out and there we go. There's our icon. Now um, the next thing you want to do is group your icon and the reason you want to do that is because uh, if you resize it without grouping it you're going to get something that looks like this. So we'll group it and I'll resize it and I'm holding the shift key down as I resize which allows me to maintain the proportionality between the sides of the shape so that it stays in its perfect shape and there we go we've got our our icon I'm going to show you one more tip I'm going to draw another rounded corner square and fill it with gray and I will take away the outline I'm sending it behind the, the icon art that's there. Now, this is the tip I wanted to show you. If I double click this and I click the uh, shape, not the icon, but the shape, and I give it a white border, if I'm working on a white background as I am now, I get a pretty nice looking little designer touch. You can use this to create a slide that looks like this. Now this is the exact same content that's on this slide, but it's a lot more visual. And this is how you can move from boring bullet point slides to dynamic visual slides using the iconic PowerPoint technique. I train in PowerPoint uh, virtually, and I also create slides for clients all the time. So if there's anything I can do to help you, please feel free to reach out. Thanks for watching, and uh, look for our other lessons on iconic PowerPoint.